100 years ago, the March 1st movement that protested for independence from Japan's colonial rule of the Korean Peninsula began. More than 10% of the Korean population took part in a series of anti-Japan rallies that lasted from March 1st through May of that year. During the three-month period, about 1,500 rallies took place nationwide, and Japan's ensuing brutal crackdowns on the rallies resulted in the death of 7,509 Koreans and 15,961 other injured, according to historical records. What launched the 1919 popular movement, and how did it unfold? This week, Korea Now looks into the movement marking one of the earliest public displays of Korean resistance during the Japanese occupation from 1910. The independence movement arose in reaction to the repressive nature of colonial occupation under the de facto military rule of the Japanese Empire following 1905. It was also inspired by the 14 points aligning the right of national self-determination, which was proclaimed by then U.S. President Woodrow Wilson at the Paris Peace Conference in January 1919. After hearing of Wilson's speech, Korean students studying in Tokyo published a statement demanding freedom from colonial rule on February 8th, which touched off the March 1st movement in their homeland. In the early hours of March 1st, a manifesto was posted along the main street of Seoul. Prepared by a group of students, the text described the suffering of the Korean people under Japanese rule and blamed a Japanese plot for the recent death of the former Korean emperor. On the same morning, the Korean Declaration of Independence, signed by 33 prominent cultural and religious leaders, was announced. The declaration adopted Wilsonian language to assault Korea's right to liberty and equality within the world of nations. After reading the declaration, hundreds of students and citizens at the park headed into the streets of the city, shouting Tehan Dongnim Manse, meaning Long Live an Independent Korea. Over the following months, about 2 million people participated in demonstrations and protests across Korea. The Japanese colonial police reported disturbances in all but seven of its 218 provinces. March 1st movement was the first mass protest of modern Korean nationalism, involving Koreans of every province, religion, class, and gender, and it marked a watershed in the evolution of Korean national identity and, more broadly, of modern Korean history. Though the movement failed to bring about this paramount goal of national independence, it escalated into clashes with colonial authorities that lasted throughout the century, such as Mahatma Gandhi's nonviolent resistance or Satyagraha in India and May 4th movement of Beijing students in China that year. It was significant as well in strengthening Korean national unity, leading to the birth of the Korean provisional government in Shanghai and switching Japan's rule from military to cultural ruling. Furthermore, the failure of March 1st greatly enhanced the rise of the Korean Communist Party. Today, March 1st is a national holiday in both North and South Korea. Now both Koreas are standing at a historic moment ahead of the second U.S.-North Korea summit and the centennial anniversary of the March 1st independence movement. Seoul and Pyongyang have been struggling with their own history of conflict. The North confronting the international community with its nuclear development and dealing with subsequent sanctions, while the South carried out painful reforms for a healthy democracy and went through an unprecedented presidential impeachment. Some critics say it's about time. South and North Korea overcome conflicts and hostilities with the March 1st spirit of liberty, equality, national unity. What are your thoughts on this? Please let me know with your comments below. Thank you for watching Korea Now.